Hey guys, I'm Shubhajit from Digit.in and today we're going to talk about a monster of a smartphone. Yes, I'm talking about the IQ3 5G. This smartphone has been getting a lot of hype online, particularly for the hardware that is packing under the hood. And that includes Snapdragon 865. The variant in my hand is already 5G supported. It has all the antennas, supports standalone and non-standalone 5G connectivity. Although that's pretty much irrelevant for India right now, there's also LPDDR5 RAM and UFS 3.1 storage and Vivo has also experimented with cooling inside the phone with a carbon fiber vapor chamber cooling unit that takes the heat away from the processor. So that's more or less the specifications. Oh, on the front you also have a punch hole AMOLED display. The punch hole camera is one of the tiniest I'm told and um, it has 180Hz touch sampling rate as well. So a lot of features to unpack, but in this video, we're primarily going to look at the performance of the IQ3 5G. And to test that, we've run a bunch of benchmark apps, we've played a couple of games, and then we have locked the data that came out of the games using an app called GameBench. So now before we begin, I just want to remind you to share the video and do remember to hit the bell icon. And without further ado, let's get started. Let's begin with our benchmark reports. I have all my numbers right here on the screen and you should also be seeing it in a bigger screen in front of you. Um, we're going to start with Antutu. Um, straight off the bat, the IQ3 scored around 585,000. Now that number is much higher than the Realme X50 that launched just a day before. So Antutu number is definitely a good uh, score to live by because that still, uh, that also showcases a lot of other things, not just the CPU performance. And that includes the GPU, the memory, storage, and everything else, right? Moving on, we're gonna move on to Geekbench. Geekbench 5 single core and multi-core results are also pretty much in line with uh, the Snapdragon 865 reference device that we got our hands on at the launch event. Um, so Geekbench 5, on the IQ3 scored uh, 928 on single core and 3289 on multi core. Now, these numbers are more or less also again comparable very much to the Realme X50, um, but the multi core number is slightly lesser. So, um, make whatever you want with that, but there's little really not much of a difference. Mobile expert scores are also pretty much in line with what we have seen with another 865 device. Um, but the PC Mark score of 10,271 is around 2,000 points lower than what we have seen with the Realme X50. So um, overall, on a standalone basis, the IQ3 5G is doing great on benchmarks. I mean, the numbers that we are seeing here are probably the highest that we have seen as compared from last year. If you move on to the GPU, the Adreno 650 in the Snapdragon 865 does perform very well. We used 3 d Mark Slingshot's OpenGL test and we got a score of 7,262. That is also pretty good. The same test with Vulcan Graphics posts like around 6,631. Pretty good, again, a little lower, but that's more or less expected considering Vulcan does tend to tax the GPU much more. Now, now that we have a good idea of where the device stands with uh, CPU and GPU performance, we're gonna quickly move on to our next bit, which is gaming. So let's move on to gaming. We played Call of Duty Mobile and PUBG Mobile on the IQ3, and the results were quite interesting to say the least. Let's move on to my screen right here. So we have the data that GameBench captured of our session for Call of Duty and straight away you can see that the Call of Duty ran with 60 frames per second. That's the highest that this game supports right now and the IQ3 manages it pretty well with just 9.62% CPU usage. Now that's pretty impressive. Right Then you have you can see the stability numbers at 100%. That means that the 60 FPS that this game ran on, there was literally no frame drop throughout the session. We, it was a four minute session, which means you, it was just enough time to complete one match. Now you see the frame rate distribution chart right here. There were slight drops here after at the two minute 21 second mark and in the one minute mark, but these are just one drop, one uh, drop in the frame so it's pretty okay, you won't be seeing any big difference while you're gaming. Now, if we have to talk about uh, the CPU performance while we were at it, 
CPU was at a high 9.62% on an average and around 16% on peak usage. This is more or less in line with what we have seen in the Realme X50 as well. The CPU is not being taxed very much while playing Call of Duty Mobile. Now Gamebench is still unable to capture GPU data for uh, Adreno 650. So we don't have the GPU numbers, how much of the load the GPU was in. But looking at how smooth things were, I don't think the GPU had any problem whatsoever in running this game. More than anything, what made Call of Duty Mobile more fun playing on the IQ3 5G is the presence of these monster buttons on top. So on the edge, you can see um, the, there are small depressions here on the edges which are basically pressure sensitive. So while you're playing, I, I play as a sniper on Call of Duty, so while I'm playing, two of my fingers are always resting here while the thumbs are moving around giving the directions to the character. So what I can do is whenever I see an enemy, I can simply tap on this button to zoom in and then tap quickly again to get a shot. It's more or less mostly a headshot most of the time, um, but the phone also helps in getting me those skills, right? Now moving on to PUBG Mobile, we're gonna see some more interesting data right here on my screen. So PUBG Mobile, after a good 10 minute session of playing Battle Royale, it ran at 40 frames per second. That is more or less, again, the same that Realme X50 ran on. And now I have reason to believe that it's not the phone, but it's the game itself that's making, that capping the frame rate to 40 FPS. Because last year, when the OnePlus 7T came out, the Realme X2 Pro came out, we had seen PUBG Mobile going all the way up to 60 FPS, even when playing Battle Royale mode. But good thing is the stability is right at 100%. So the 40 FPS that you're experiencing here, that is constant. There is no frame drop whatsoever. I have the frame rate distribution chart right here on my screen. And you can see it's more or less pretty consistent from what we have uh, seen during the game. Um, if we have to talk about the CPU performance while in PUBG Mobile, once again, I'm expecting the CPU to be much higher. Yes, the peak usage is now higher at 30.99%, which is around 31%, while the average usage is around 10%. So between Call of Duty and PUBG Mobile, the CPU is getting stressed almost equally, and that's just 10%. Imagine the games that you can run if there are um, apps that can make the most of the Snapdragon 865 and the Adreno 650 GPU. But presently, this is the best you get. And what I can see from this test right now is the IQ3 is running everything pretty flawlessly without much of an effort whatsoever. So that was more or less it. We showed you gaming, we showed you the benchmark numbers. Um, which should be good enough for you to make an intelligent informed decision whether this phone is a good performer. If you ask me, I believe this is already one of the best performers that we are looking at this year and the Samsung Galaxy S20 has not even turned up in our labs yet. So the IQ3 5G is uh, right up there with the premium flagships right now, at least as far as the performance is concerned. We're going to test out the camera on this one uh, in another video. And then we're also going to have a performance comparison between the Realme X50 Pro and the IQ3. So stay tuned for that. Let us know what you thought of this video. Post all your questions, comments, doubt in the comment section below. And for more videos like this, stay tuned to Jit.in and don't forget to hit the bell icon again. Thank you.